I'm Beth. And I'm Beth. Welcome, welcome to, to Physics, Physics with, with Beth and Beth. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Physics with Beth and Beth. We're in AP Physics 1 curriculum as always. We're still in Unit 2 and this is going to be our last video unless we find something else we want to post or hear from one of you that want to see something, but this will be our last video. And this video is really about taking Newton's second law and the big three, which are also called, really called, our uniform accelerated motion equations. We like to refer to them as the big three. And using those together to derive expressions for things like acceleration, time, distance. And in then taking it up a notch, and saying, okay, if we change something in that expression, what happens to uh, what, we've, what we've solved for? If it was time, what happens to time? If it's distance, what happens to distance? So anyway, we're just gonna get started. Because this is dynamics, we always start with an FBD. It's not a disease. I know that D in a lot of terms in medical means disease. It's not, it's a good thing in physics. So we're gonna get started. And we have a, I have a dot here, which is how I start all of our free body diagrams, of course. And the problem is, and I've written this a little small so I can have some board space, sorry about that. Um, you might wanna pause it if you need to take a screenshot of that to see it. But we have a car traveling at velocity V, it applies its brakes, and then it stops in a time T and a distance D. So it takes it a distance and a time to come to a complete stop. All right, so we have, because this is a car, it's got mass, we know we have force due to gravity. We're gonna be using those little hints along the way. Um, if your object has mass, which it will, you're always gonna have force due to gravity, which don't forget is equal to mg, the mass of that car times little g. Okay, then it's on a surface. This car is on a road, so there's your clue that it has normal force because the, the surface pushes up on the object. So we have a normal force here. Uh, you're also, and I try to make those even because they are balanced. The car is not coming up vertically off the road or crashing through the road. So these have to be balanced forces, meaning they're equal, but they're in opposite directions. Uh, you're also gonna see this as F with a capital N. Whatever your teacher does is the right answer. All right, or your professor. I like to use N, that's just me. And then we have friction here. All right, and again, you might see that as a capital F with a lowercase, but I like to just use a lowercase F. All right, and that is actually our free body diagram. And you're like, whoa, wait, Beth, shouldn't you have a force to the right of like the thrust of an engine or the pull or push of an engine, if you want to call it that, applied force? And the answer is actually no. As soon as your foot comes off the accelerator and hits the brakes, you no longer have a force pushing it forward. You only have friction with, caused by the brakes that's causing it to stop. It looks terribly unbalanced in that, in that X direction, that horizontal direction. You only have one force. And I know it looks weird, but that's how it is. Excuse me, but that's how it is. And we did a problem actually with this almost exact same in an earlier video, but we actually came up with numbers. Today we're gonna be deriving some expressions and tying it into those UAMs. All right, so there is our free body diagram done. Now we're gonna go for the expression for acceleration. All right, well, the sum of the forces in the X equal mass times acceleration in the X, Newton's second law. Why did I say in the X direction horizontal? Because that's why the car is accelerating, right? And it's actually accelerating to the west. How do I know that? Because the only force that I have in the X direction is friction. All right, there's my vector sign. and. Um, since friction is to the west, mass is scalar, acceleration is going to have to be to the west. How else would I know that? Well, this car was moving east to begin with, and it's moving east the whole time. It's just slowing down to a stop, so that means its velocity is positive, and if it's slowing down, remember we've talked about this over and over in unit one and two, important concept, that if, then if it's slowing down, velocity and acceleration have to be opposite signs, meaning opposite directions. So acceleration is negative, just like we suspected here. Friction is to the west, so acceleration needs to be to the west. The car is still moving east whole time, just slowing down. Okay, perfect. Now that I have this expression, it says find an expression for acceleration. Well, I'm just going to divide by mass, and I get negative my friction force divided by mass. I'm dividing both sides by mass 
equals my acceleration. And you think, oh good, I'm done, I have an expression. Well, I've left this, uh, uh, this, actually look at what this says, expression for acceleration. It can only be mu, the coefficient of friction, velocity, and any constants, which when they say that, they mean little g, usually. It can mean any constants, but they mean, it can mean pi later on, but in this unit, it's gonna mean little g. And I'm like, oh, I can't have friction, and I can't have mass, so I am not done. Always check what they're allowing you to have. All right, so I'm like, oh boy, now what do I do? Okay, if I let the problem guide you, you've heard me say this a hundred times probably already if you've been watching these videos, they said mu. I only have one equation for mu, and that's friction, and I'm gonna show you that. It's our fun formula right here, all right? That friction force equals that coefficient of friction times the normal force. All right, spells fun. Now again, remember, you might be using this for normal, whatever. Uh, and that's perfect. If the teacher says that, that's great. I like to use a capital N because then it really does spell fun because physics is fun. Aren't we having fun? <laughs> Yay. All right, so I'm like, oh, okay, I've got something I can put in for friction. But wait a minute, they didn't say I could have normal either. So I look at my free body diagram and I'm like, oh, normal is in the Y. I'm now gonna come over here and I'm gonna sum my forces in the Y equal mass times acceleration in the Y. We already said that car is not coming off the surface in the Y direction at all. So that means there's no acceleration. It's not popping up in the air or falling through the road. So I have normal up, that's positive. I have force due to gravity down, that's negative, equals zero. I just put in my two forces in the Y direction and one was up positive, one was down negative, times mass, uh, times acceleration, which is zero, so that whole side just equals zero, and now I know, hey, normal equals force due to gravity. All right, well, we have an equation for force due to gravity. It's mg, so that means normal equals mass times uh, g. So I'm gonna put that in here, mass times our little g. Then my friction, equals my mu times mg. All right, so now I have an expression to put for friction here. And why am I doing this again? Remember, they are not allowing friction or mass in my expression. So now I'm gonna go up here and say, oh, okay, I have negative friction, but friction is mu mg. I'm over mass equals acceleration. Oh, 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 look. Mass, it's on the top and the bottom, it can cancel out. Woohoo! All right, so now my acceleration, and I ran out of room, so I'm gonna go over here, and I'm gonna block this so that we can keep that separate. Keep all this separate so you can see what I've done. I started here with my summing my forces in the X, realized that I can't live with this expression for acceleration, I have to do something else. They told me mu, so that was my hint that I might need to use that fun formula, I have to. And then I'm like, ooh, I don't know normal, so I gotta go over here and sum forces in the Y. And you may just be able to see that. Hey, I know there's no acceleration in the Y, so this force is opposite and equal to this force. Uh, it's not a third law pair though, but they are opposite and equal. So then you plug in your normal and you get this expression for friction, plug it in here. And now I say, hey, acceleration in the X is negative mu G. And that is my answer for that expression in part A. I had to get to all those steps to get that. All right, so it's negative mu coefficient of friction times G because my mass is canceled out. Negative, it should be negative. We said, hey, acceleration is gonna be negative because it's going east and slowing down to a stop, perfect. Now we're gonna do the expression for time, and it's gonna require you to use those constants for every uh, part, A, B, and C. So now we're on part B. All right, they want an expression for time. Okay, I'm thinking, hey, I know that my final velocity is zero, my initial velocity is V, and I have acceleration and time. That's a UAM, the first one. This is zero. So I'm gonna subtract from both sides that velocity, initial velocity, times A over T. 
and I'm like, I'm sorry, times A equals A, acceleration times time, if I can get that out. All right, now I'm, they want an expression for time, so I'm just gonna divide by acceleration. And I'm like, woo, I'm done, I have an expression. But look at this, no, only mu, coefficient of friction, velocity, and any constants. I, it does not say I can have acceleration in this. But guess what? Let the problem guide you again. You just found an expression for acceleration. We're just gonna sub that in. So now negative V, uh, acceleration is negative mu, that Greek letter for coefficient of friction times little g equals t. All right, ooh, all right, well your negatives become positives and then that's your expression, velocity divided by uh, coefficient of friction times little g equals time. And the, the negative divided by negative is a positive, which is a good thing because time can never come out to be negative. If it is, you guys need to um, send me a little note. Let me know if you figured out how to do that so we can market that. Everybody wants to go back in time sometimes, figure something out, do something a little different. All right, now, C is the expression for distance. So again, we have that final velocity, we have that initial velocity, which they said, hey, just call it V, uh, plus two times acceleration, times in your formula it says delta x, but they said, hey, call that delta x d. So I'm just gonna put d in here. We know our final velocity is zero again, because remember this car comes to a complete stop. I'm gonna subtract that velocity, initial velocity squared to both sides, and to a d, I'm gonna divide by both sides by uh, two times acceleration. And I get an expression for my distance. And I'm like, yes, again. But then I'm like, no, I gotta look up here and there's no acceleration again. I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Negative V squared over two. And my acceleration is a negative mu G. And that's gonna equal that distance. Okay, well look at this. My negatives again go to positives. So I'm just gonna actually wipe those out. All right, so we get V squared divided by two times mu times little g, or coefficient of friction times little g equals d. I now have an expression for uh, a, b, and c, and I am very happy with that because that is what we can have. Constants, coefficient of friction, and velocity. Voila, we're done, yay! Okay, but now it says, hey, let's do something about this. And these are very common questions um, on exams, engineering exams, on uh, college physics exams in high school and on the AP exam, they're gonna say, hey, change something and then tell me what's affected. So in this case, they say, hey, if I increase velocity, what will happen to time and what will happen to distance? Okay, we'll look at this and I'm just gonna take those positive signs out now. If I increase velocity, that is in the numerator, that means your time is going to increase because they are directly proportionate. When one increases, the other increases, and that's a key term to use, directly proportionate, but increasing velocity increases time. So uh, if initial velocity is increased, time increases. I'm just gonna put I in C for increases. All right, same thing with distance. If velocity is increased, distance is gonna increase because velocity is in the numerator, and so that means on the right side, the distance will increase, and they are also proportionate to each other directly proportionate to each other. V squared is, is proportionate to D. All right, now, so that's how you work these and how you word those on when they ask you to justify using the expression you derived. And that's what it would have said. Using the expression you derived, if velocity is increased, how is time and, and uh, distance is affected? How is time and distance affected? And the answer is they're both increased, okay? Because of directly proportionate. But now it says, hey, part E, if coefficient of friction is increased, how is time and distance affected? All right, well now we're looking at coefficient of friction, which is mu, right? If coefficient of friction is increased, that's in the denominator. That's gonna cause time to decrease. So I'm gonna put a DEC here for decrease. All right, because, and the wording is, that when you increase a denominator, then on the right side of the equation is going to be decreased because they are inversely proportionate. When one increases, the other decreases. Same thing over here when we go to our uh, velocity and our distance uh, formula that's divided by two 
times coefficient of friction times little g, and that equals distance, I should say. When you decrease mu right here, that coefficient of friction, uh, I am so sorry. When you increase it, because it said, what happens if you increase it? My bad, sorry. If you increase, I got ahead of myself. If you increase mu coefficient of friction, that's in the denominator, and that's going to cause that distance to decrease. Got a little ahead of myself there. Um, so, again, inversely proportionate. When one increases, then on the right side it decreases because that coefficient of friction is in the denominator. I hope that helps on how you take use second law and the UAM equations, the big three, to find and derive expressions without numbers, and then how to use this, this whole concept of if you change something in this expression, what happens? to uh, time and what happens to distance or whatever they're asking for. All right, I hope force problems aren't hitting you too hard this unit and that they're becoming easier for you. Thank you for watching and happy physics -y.